Hey everybody, sorry for the late delay. Uh, we were having some Wi-Fi problems, couldn't get everything up. Um, right now I'm holding everything in my hands because I wanted to share a few things with you. Um, uh, if you're looking uh, at the pictures I posted this morning, you saw that I uh, showed the completed jewelry cabinet that I did. But the one thing I wanted to share about that, which I haven't done so before, is one of the cool things that helped me out with this project. Um, I'm going to come over to the other side of my uh, studio. Uh, and it's just as exciting as the this side. Uh, I'm going to show you down here towards the feet. Sorry about my fingers. Um, see these little wheels? These little casters, I got them, uh, I want to say from Harbor Freight. But they allow me to roll a piece of furniture around. And I just put one under each leg. And it is super, super helpful. Um, because I'll show you this around here. This is the other side of my studio. And then I have this side of my studio. So I have limited space. I also have a storage closet, but I have some limited space and the ability to roll furniture around while I've moved from one piece to another without uh, killing myself is really, really important. Now I'm gonna put you all in the stand. Hey Kate, nice to see you. Um, I'm going to put you in the little stand on my desk. We're going to be kind of moving around my studio a little bit today. Kate called me after yesterday's video and said, bless you, you took on the hardest kind of metal to try to do Veraclamaze with. And yeah, it was my first time doing it. So after I cut off the video yesterday, I was experimenting with different ways to actually pick up the leaf and put it on the glass. And what I actually ended up using was my gilder's knife and my finger because this leaf, I have a little scrap of it here, is actually really stiff. Hey Shelly, nice to see you. Um, it's, it's, it's heavier and it's stiffer and it's actually kind of brittle, unlike regular gold leaf, which is malleable. This stuff, when it bends, it cracks. So um, it was kind of a work in progress yesterday to figure out how to get it adhered to the glass. And I'm gonna flip it down. And as you can see, I managed to get the whole glass covered. Oh, I gotta pull it back the other way. Still figuring out this reverse camera thing. Um, everything has set overnight. The, the silver is adhered down. Now, if you look at it from the other side, and yes, the glass is dirty, but you can see it has pulled on here and there is a, because this uh, silver has not a perfect texture on it, it has, um, a sort of mirror-like reflection as opposed to when I would use pure gold, which adheres down and it creates a perfect mirror. But this is a decorative piece and I'm fine with that. So now I have my brush, my skewings brush, and I'm gonna come back in here and clear all of the little bits off of this. Normally, um, I might try to keep all of the little skewings, uh, which, and by the way, for those who don't know what skewings are, skewings are these little bits that I'm brushing off. Um, I'm actually, hoping that I don't have 100% perfect adhesion. As you can see, I've got a little part here that didn't grab um, because I'm going to be using this. Ooh, actually, this is kind of cool. My gelatin was a little old and I knew it when I did it. So I made the, the Gilder's liquor a little stronger, but I also knew that because my gelatin's a little older, I might not get great uh, uh, adhesion with a heavier metal like this silver and it was in on uh, absolutely on purpose because this is going to go over some decorative paper on the top of the nightstand I'm working on and I want the paper to peek through the silver so I'm really actually good with way this is coming out uh, I, ooh, I like the way this is eating away on my brush. I'm pushing a little hard on this too. If I were, normally I'd be a little more delicate. And if I was really concerned about the adhesion, I would have put another wash of Gilder's liquor over this to really suck it down tight. Um, but I'm actually good with the fact that I don't have perfect adhesion on here. And I'll take it and knock it down. And 
I'm gonna do some experiments with patina on this. Now, because this leaf is already um, colored, and uh, Kate, who has been a darling and, and guided me, she's worked with this before uh, and I haven't, this kind of silver doesn't um, oxidize and turn funny colors when you treat it with chemicals because it's already been chemically treated to get this blue. Um, gosh, that's kind of cool looking. Oh, I like how erratic that is. I might not even have to do that. What I was originally thinking, I was originally gonna try to hit it with some bleach, but I'm getting such cool tearing out of this just by using this brush and pushing on it. Uh, I might have saved myself some work. <laughs> Happy accident day. Um, but I also, because I didn't want to test it on this, I created one little tile uh, so I can do some uh, chemical reaction experiments. And we're still going to do those experiments, although I think I'm going to move the camera. Oops. Yeah, that was nice. Sorry about that. Uh, there we go. Put it back on. I'm going to angle this so you can see a little better. Um, again, I put some of the, the blue, ocean blue leaf on here. Jeez, the, my, I really didn't get a good grip on this, and I, I'm really kind of loving the fact that I didn't. I love the way this is kind of peeling back. See how pretty that looks? Of course, then I'd have to still figure out what to put behind it one way or the other. I was keeping this, I think these would make great coasters, but I still have to seal the back with something so that it didn't scrape off every time somebody used it and it would still have to have something on it anyway because I'd have to felt mount the back, but I'm babbling, no matter. So a lot of times on silver, the thing to use to get an interesting reaction is Clorox because Clorox um, oxidizes, bleach in general will oxidize silver and eat it and make it turn all kinds of funky colors like um, blue and purpley and grayish. Um, however, since this is already blue, I'm just doing an experiment. Now what I'm using here is the splashless bleach because it's got sort of a gel texture. It's a little thicker than regular and it means I can get it on and have a little more control. So this is just gonna be an experiment on this. I may just keep rubbing at this and getting more of it off. So here's what I'm doing. I've got a little bit on a chip brush and I'm gonna kind of dab it on this and see what it does. And we're gonna let that sit right now. Sometimes it happens right away, sometimes it doesn't. This leaf is interesting stuff. I don't know exactly what it's gonna do or how long it's gonna take. And I just put a couple drops here and a couple drops there. And now my studio smells like a swimming pool. Uh, meanwhile, I might just brush at this a little bit to see how much more I can get off. Ooh, could big chunks falling off. Um, the reason, the issue with the gelatin being old, it's like um, when you're cooking. If your gelatin is old when you're making something, it doesn't gel properly. It doesn't, it doesn't harden, it doesn't firm up the way it's supposed to. So fresh gelatin's important. Well, my I know my gelatin's old. So as instead of just throwing it out as I've gone along, I've kind of made each solution a little stronger just uh, to make it work. But I also rarely work in silver. Um, most of the time I'm working in 22, 23 karat gold or um, some of the paler golds that are lower karat. Um, thank you, Kate. I appreciate it. I love this color. I'm, I'm like totally in love with this ocean blue. Um, so let's see what it's doing. Well, it's, I'll hold it up close to the camera. I don't know if you can see it. See, this is where I put some, put my finger in it right here. And it's kind of puckering up the metal. And from the front, you can see it's puckering up the metal here. So it's, Right now, I think it's just sort of eating the, the metal away a little bit, but it's not really um, causing any reactions. When I do this with real with um, untreated silver, like they, you know, by sterling uh, sterling silver, uh, um, I don't even know if it's sterling. I don't know how much it is. Uh, does real aluminum react to bleach too? Not really. 
Um, you can sometimes get a little blackish marking on it, but it doesn't really do the patinaing thing. Aluminum is designed to be fairly indestructible. This works better with real gold if you want real, I mean, real silver. And it also works on composition golds, um, meaning the Dutch metals that are made with brass and all kinds of other things. Um, it, ha it only works on metals that are naturally easy to patina. So since composition metal contains things like brass in it, which is easy to patina, chemical reactions work. Silver is a patina as a metal that uh, tarnishes easily, so these chemical reactions work really easily on it. Um, I'm sitting here looking at this. Now normally, if this was regu just regular sil true silver leaf, um, it would be eating away at it and turning funky colors around the edges, and really, it's really not kind of doing much of anything. I'm not, I'm not seeing much of anything. Uh, it might just kind of eat away at the metal and eventually I just brush it off. Well, I don't need to do that because quite frankly, it's brushing off on its own. Um, now, the other thing I will do is test things to test shellacking this because um, Sometimes these silvers that have been treated don't like to be top coated. However, I'm not top, I'm not coating the front. I'd be coating the back so that the front stays stable. I don't know how this is going to react to shellac. Somebody else uh, might know better than I because this is this is totally a crapshoot for me right now. Um, but I don't want it to change the color of the silver. And if it's going to change, I, I also have uh, acrylic. I have solvent born acrylics. I have. Um, Golden's MSA varnish, which is solvent and mineral spirits, which actually often it causes the least reaction. So I'm going to test a couple of different top coats to see when I, uh, on this piece, so that when I need to coat the back of the silver on this, it, it doesn't change the color of the silver all the way through. Um, and that has happened to me on other metals that will patina. Um, I've done it on uh, composition golds and I've done it on specially patinaed golds and uh, composition gold leaves you know the uh, things like that and I've, I've had some weird reactions happen that have gone all the way through the metal so that you see it behind the glass and I'm trying to avoid that um, while I let this bleach mess sit here okay I just got to show you there's a really pretty pile of stuff here in this corner and it's so pretty it almost looks like I want to eat it I know that's not good for me. So um, I'm going to go over. We're going to go over and I'm going to put you on on the tripod so you can actually see where I'm also going with the nightstand so that you understand where how I'm building what this silver top, this blue silver top is going to look like on top of everything. And I know, fingers in the camera. Okay, spin you around. Ooh, dizzy. Tripod time. Let's see, make sure this is not messing with the volume. All right, this takes me just a second to set up, so please be patient with me. Okay, so here's the nightstand that I sprayed yesterday. Um, the top was always kind of cruddy. I didn't bother to sand it and make it perfect because I knew I was going to be doing something over it. So I have that silver silvered piece of glass that I'm putting on it, but I want something to peek through it. And I went through all kinds of paper combinations. I have uh, a file folder full of paper um, that I use, homemade, handmade papers. This is going to work best with what's already in my room because I have a, a metallic wall in about this color behind my bed. So the next step is to adhere this paper to this surface. And, oops, sorry guys, I kicked it with my foot. Um, I'm going to use a product. I already have it in a dish, but this is it. It's Set Coat Clear. Um, it is the same as Set Coat, only there's absolutely no tints or uh, base colors in it whatsoever. Let's see. Hey Sue, nice to see you too. Uh, you use the Lasco varnish. At Blick to top coat silver leaf, it doesn't tarnish the leaf. 
that's very good to know. Solvent based stuff doesn't always tarnish it, but I'm, I was, and I suppose I could probably just even use ducks on the back of it, which is, um, I'll talk about that later, but it's this product. I'm just trying not to make sure that it stays clear in case um, any of it gets over the leaf. I don't want it to uh, show. So, because I'm, I'm not gonna completely coat the glass. It, that would make the glass look cloudy and funny. So here we're gonna go, hey Eric, hey Kristen, nice to see you. Um, we're gonna step back into what I was doing before. If I don't, um, because I have to do this to read the screen right now. If I don't answer your questions right away, I'll try to get back to them in the comments after I've stopped because this is not easy and it's really, really uncomfortable. Um, okay, back to this. So the first thing I'm going to do to measure the paper, it was pretty simple. I took the paper that I'm using, I turned it upside down, and I drew a pencil line around the whole thing. I made it a little bit bigger so that I have a little play with it. And then I cut it out. And for anybody who doesn't know, um, I have several scissors dedicated to different things. I have scissors that are dedicated only to paper, scissors dedicated only to fabric, and then scissors that everybody uses and beat the crap out of. Because when you're on a fine paper or a fine piece of fabric, all the other stuff dulls your blades. So I don't let anybody just pick up a pair of scissors in my studio and do with it whatever they want. Uh, okay, so set coat clear. Um, for any of you who've used Mod Podge or any of these other clear coats, it's similar to that except that set coat will dry completely clear. It doesn't leave the paper translucent and then you have a 100% paintable surface that is not absorbent once you've sealed up the paper on it with the set coat clear. So um, actually, I'm gonna be smart and put on my gloves first because I always do this with my hands and then I end up making myself a, a pair of gloves with set coat. So hairstyling gloves, I get them at Sally Beauty. I don't like latex gloves. I don't like the feeling of them being that tight on my fingers. Coating this, and I'm not being terribly careful. Uh, I'm just getting it on. I've taken the edges of my tape and sealed it down nicely and neatly. This is new paint, so I'm not putting uh, pushing hard on the tape anywhere around here. I'm just sealing it to the edge. And if I pull up a little, it's black set coat. I can touch it up because I haven't touched. I haven't even top coated the rest of this yet. So I've got that on there. Here's my paper. I gotta make sure I've got it going the right way because I th this is rounded edges here and squared edges in the back. I'm gonna set it on and I'm gonna slide it around until it's a put on here correctly. And the nice thing is with the set coat, it doesn't wet it so much that the paper then becomes too fragile to shift, which happens with a lot of other products. Okay, so I'm smoothing it down with my hand now, this is not how I leave it, though. To seal this up, set coat clear it back over. And it makes the part paper darker for now. It will dry back to its original look. Set coat itself doesn't, set coat clear itself, it's not a glossy product. It dries like an eggshell finish. Everybody says, how do you deal with the bubbles? Well, I'm about to show you how. Put this back down here. That's why I have the gloves on. I'm smoothing all the edges down. Now, if I get some on my tape like I have here, it's not a big deal because I will take a razor blade and cut it and make it nice and neat. Um, normally, I would have this up on the table, but my uh, tripod doesn't go up that high, so you'd never see it. All right. I'm just checking to make sure I have no bubbles. So I got one bubble there and I gently work the bubbles to the edge. It's a little like wallpapering, only I don't do it with a brush because the brush would shred the paper. I 
I never really was satisfied with anything I did in the decoupage style stuff until I started doing it with set coat clear. This gives me a paintable surface, but the bond is really strong and it's not shiny and it doesn't look plasticky. Okay, now I gotta get rid of the gloves because I can't touch a darn one other thing. What? <laughs> Throwing gloves, okay, whatever. Say it that way. Um, the other thing I have to do is the drawer front and, excuse me, the medallion. So I decided that I was going to use that same, let me flip it up to me so I can see. Okay, oh, I made the volume do strange things. Sorry about that for a second. Give me a sec here. That's better. Uh, I don't, if you, hey Jeff, how are you? Nice to see you. I don't know if any of you are familiar with ever putting an iPhone on a tripod, but if you do it slightly wrong, it catches the volume buttons and turns it up and down and makes it do kind of crazy things. And I regularly do that because I'm a little bit of a klutz here in the studio because my, my focus is more on this than this. Um, so back to what I'm doing. Uh, I have tried a whole bunch of oil-based sizes. My favorite used to be a product called Rollco Quick Size. Unfortunately, Rollco's gone out of st uh, uh, gone out of business. I have their 12-hour size, which means you let it set up for 12 hours, and then you have at least 12 hours to work on it. Um, I must have a very old can because the adhesion level in it is t completely screwy. Uh, screwy. I use, uh, for the most part, I use Ducks now, Ducks Quick Size, which means it sets up in anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours for me, depends on the weather, the temperature, the humidity. So I'll, this will be ready for me to use at some point this afternoon. Um, it is oil-based, it's stinky. The reason I'm not using water-based size, I know somebody's gonna ask, is because silver is a tarnishable metal. And even though this has been treated, I don't know what it would do if I put um, a water-based size on it. I don't wanna take the chance that it's going to do something I don't want to do to the silver. So uh, I err on the side of caution and I pop open my Just so I'm, I'm, I'm getting Facebook Messenger messages and it pops into the screen right across my face. So it's kind of entertaining me. Um, what I'm doing is I'm opening my uh, can of size and it's amber in color, which is awesome because if you put something like this over silver, even, hello Martin. Um, I, for, for, if you do this over silver, it will actually turn the silver, a, a light amber color as a top coat because I can, I can use oftentimes my oil-based size as an oil-based top coat, but it has an amber patina to it and it's really, really pretty stuff. Um, but you, you know, this is, I've been doing this for a while, so I've kind of learned the ins and outs of different sizes. Um, everybody has their favorite. Right now, since I've lost my Rollco Quick Size, my favorite is Ducks Quick Size. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the oil-based size on here. Uh, I'm going to angle the camera down so you can see what I'm doing, and I am going to do it in my lap. Pardon the uh, things in front of there. Let's see if I can find a way to do this and not spill it. Ah! <laughs> Well, you know what happens on live cameras? Things fall apart. <laughs> so my brush literally just fell apart as I was trying to dip it in. That's okay. I don't spend, uh, where, where are my bears and trees? Martin's teasing me about, I had a drop cloth in the back that was an old flannel sheet of my son's. I took it down. It's back in the closet where it belongs for the next time I have to cover something up. All right, so I'm gonna size this. And uh, I love the smell of this stuff. I know not everybody loves the smell of oil-based products. I do. And I'm going to then let this set up. And 
as you no might have noticed, I did not tape off the medallion because the medallion has kind of a complicated shape. And I'm going to work on that for a second and show you how that goes. Um, when you have a shape this detailed, go slowly and start from the center out and work the product into the crevices. Um, I'm not worried if I build up a little bubble in here. I will probably um, do a second coat just to make sure that I got all of the details. And honestly, that silver that I use, that blue silver is so brittle. I'm not even sure I will get 100% um, coverage with that. Um, I'm gonna be taking all those skewings that are sitting over on my desk and uh, piling them into the crevices and hoping for the best. I have just enough silver left to do the drawer front probably nicely. And this thing, this little medallion, probably a little on uh, the patchy side, but that's okay. Again, it's for me. I know exactly what I'm expecting out of it. Now, I I've said this before. You saw me do a really quick spray yesterday and I didn't flip it over. I wasn't terribly conscious because it was already black if I had a perfect coverage on it. Remember, this is for me. I take shortcuts for me that I would never take for a client. If I did, if, if my painter did some of the stuff I saw myself doing yesterday on a job, I'd fire myself. But again, this is a little quick project for me because they're doing repairs upstairs uh, in my apartment on a wall and it's an excuse to finally finish this. Uh, and hopefully, 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 um, get things tidied up. I'm also repainting the walls up there now since uh, they have made me move all the furniture out of the, the room. And he's taking forever to plaster the walls. I don't know whether it's, he's, he doesn't use quick, quicker setting product. He's an old guy. I'm not arguing with him. It's getting done. So meanwhile, I'll just come down here and work on projects. I'll work on finishes for our new uh, New World Finishing Paint class that is uh, March 26th through 29th at the Faux Finish School in Louisville, Kentucky. Yes, Martin, I am plugging. And uh, see if I want to update anything for our Timeless Creations class that is, I believe, on April 9th at the uh, Faux Finish School in Louisville. Uh, both classes are already filling. I'm really excited about that. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the, the New World Finishing class because it's a brand new class and I've designed a whole bunch of new finishes. Although I gotta tell you, every time I do Timeless, I'm also putting a brand new finish in that because each class, every student gets something that nobody else has ever been taught before by me. Okay, so I've worked this in. This has got to set up for a while. This I will probably throw away. Let me put this back up so you can see my face and I'm not dipping around. Um, this will probably get thrown away at the end of this because, well, yeah, it's coming apart. Um, but this is solvent-based cleaner. This gets cleaned in mineral spirits, whereas the Set Coat Clear, obviously, as a water-based product, just walk, uh, soap and water clean up. The, this uh, nightstand top will be dry within an hour. Um, I actually not going to do anything. I'm going to let it set up maybe even overnight. Um, when it's completely dry, I will trim the extra paper off the edges and that, and then once this is all completely dry, I'm going to do a spray coat of varnish plus, um, I haven't decided satin or gloss. Usually black, uh, you want to start with gloss and then step down to satin so you don't have it cloud up. Um, I was just, I'm just deciding whether I want it actually as a shiny piece or if I want it as a satin piece. But I'll spray the, the top coat on there with my little Wagner that you've seen me use. It's, it's actually turning out to be a, a fun favorite tool because it's so fast and easy for me to do something with. And then meanwhile, we'll get back over to the desk over here. I'm gonna see what I'm doing with the, the silver. Hopefully I don't blow anything up. I know I say that a lot, but sometimes it's, it really is. I've had strange chemical reactions happen when I've been working with metals and different chemicals. I've seen things start to smoke. I've watched things just completely curl up and crinkle. Um, so yeah, truly, but we also sometimes when you're working with things that are solvent based, 
if you look on the sides of the cans, it'll say this product is combustible. So you have to make sure that it dries properly and the, the, the tools that you use or the rags that you use, have, the solvents have completely evaporated in them um, before you dispose of them because putting them in a, a you know, like, um, for example, so using something like uh, solvent-based wax, <laughs> I care, I hope I don't blow up anything too. Thank you. Um, but there are, there are materials that we use as finishers on a regular basis that have uh, a combustible element to them. Um, that's why they tell you to store rags in either in a, 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 a sealed can with water in them or to let them air out completely so that all the solvents evaporate. And most of the time I work in water-based, but I am working with an oil-based product for this size. So I have to be aware of what I'm doing. And I also, you know, I'm using bleach. So I don't want to go clean something with ammonia after I've just poured bleach into stuff because um, I could create mustard gas and I really don't want to pass out cold in my studio. So I, I'm having a great day in the studio. My walls are drying upstairs with new plaster on them. Uh, I'm gonna go back over here uh, to see where I'm at. I'm probably just gonna take off a little more of that silver and leave it as is because I really don't think that I'm getting any enough reaction out of the Clorox to make it worse, worth it for me to do anything else. And the silver is actually coming off because my Gilder's liquor was so weak that I'm having a cool kind of peel back already happening. And that orange marble paper is going to look awesome underneath it. So happy Saturday. I think I've said enough because now I'm starting to babble. Uh, I am going to have myself my, the rest of my day, and I hope you all are having fun. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Gilda, nice to see you. Um, you're catching me at the end. I've been on for a while. Uh, and uh, anything else? Any questions? Post them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And have a great Saturday. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Hello, I'm videoing from up in my apartment because my studio is currently torn up. They're doing a check in the basement for a leak that causes the little river to run under my desk. So I'm really glad that they're doing that. Uh, but now I have to kind of work upstairs for a couple days, which is also entertaining because my bedroom was torn up because they were doing plaster repairs on, for a leak under a window. So my bedroom's in the dining room my studio's in the middle of a room, and I'm standing here just thinking I've had enough. So anyway, to get to the point, uh, I want, everybody saw me working on the nightstand, and I thought I'd show you the end results, because uh, it's already upstairs. I didn't leave it downstairs. I was afraid a handyman wouldn't smash it around like they did the last table that I had down there. Uh, I have already been painting all day, painting my bedroom, painting furniture, painting everything. So back to the nightstand. It is complete. I put a top coat of varnish plus gloss on everything. And when I applied the paper with this set coat clear, it dried absolutely perfect. And I was really happy, but I forgot when you put set coat on something, it, I mean, sorry, set, not set coat, varnish plus, it penetrates and actually it created a really cool look. If you look down here, it's really shiny, glossy, and really marbly. I know it's marble paper, but it got even richer looking. So I'm really happy with that. And here's how the front turned out. Let's see if there's any light here. If I'm blocking the light, I'll take better pictures. But I got the hardware on. You can see that. Everything's done. And I know you all want to see the glass. So the glass is completed. It gets into some light. My living room is not lit the same way my studio is. So here is the glass. It has all the blue, sil uh, the ocean blue uh, Japanese silver on it. And then I put the little, let's see if I can see where you can see them. I put those little furniture nubs things in the corners up here so that when it sits on top of the nightstand, it doesn't um, sit, the, the finish on one doesn't sit directly on the finish of each the other and accidentally bond. So I'm putting the glass down now and I'll show you how it looks. 
and I got it the wrong. I have the chip spot that goes in the back corner by the back wall so nobody really sees it. Now the glass is smaller than the nightstand, but I don't care about that because again, it's for me. And here's how it looks on the top. And I'll get back so you can see it a little better. It's so pretty. I know you're seeing all my mess in the background. And then there's the drawers. Yeah, my, my ceiling's copper. Um, and let's see if I can turn this somewhere so there's more some more light maybe. Oh, my kind husband found a flashlight, so hang on a sec. There you go. Little better light there. This is hard for me to do because I'm doing it in selfie mode. And then there's the top again. And I love this um, silver because it has sort of a green reflection to it. And of course, I'll take pictures that are better and clearer. And I'm going to turn the flashlight off before I blind myself. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.